on YouTube. Happy Monday. It's a sunshiny Monday here in Kentucky, which is nice. Hopefully it'll be a lovely day on the road. But the weather is not what I'm yammering about this morning as I'm making my way from uh, one delivery towards my next pickup. What I'm yammering about this morning is a question that's been percolating through my mind off and on the uh, last few months, maybe a year, that doesn't really have an answer yet. And the question is, have we reached the extreme end yet with the societal pendulum and how it's swinging? And considering what's been happening most recently, the answer quite clearly is no. Apparently we still have far to swing with the rise of anti-Semitism being outwardly expressed on university campuses and really quite terrible things being said about you know, a variety of groups in the media. But I'm not educated enough on some of these things to offer qualified, what I would consider to be quality commentary. So I'll hold my tongue with some of those things and the people who really have their their feet to the ground or believe themselves to have their feet to the ground in the situations to be the ones who speak. So I'll, I'll leave that where it is. But where I do feel somewhat qualified to speak is in the issue of what is now becoming kind of a mainstream concern, and that is red pill content and you know, men's rights movements and advocacy and uh, things to do with the modern man because obviously I am a man. I also live in the current modern times. So I guess you could say I'm a modern man, but what that really entails nowadays, I'm not too sure what the true meaning of it is anymore because there seems to be two ways that the quote-unquote modern men are looked at and that is through the lens of uh, leftist ideology and what a man should be while attacking what they don't like men to be, and then perhaps a more rightist ideology that is trying to, in some cases, trying to remind people what men are supposed to be and what role men should fill, while also attacking what they believe to be the wrong sort of man. And that has led to um, a rise in uh, a pantheon, so to speak, of content creators on YouTube and Rumble and other places, you know, podcasters, talking about things to do with men and, well, quite honest, also, obviously, uh, male-female relational dynamics and things of that nature. And of course, the loudest voices have gotten the most attention and the most dramatic voices have also gotten the most attention. And now the media has caught wind of these folks as brand new targets, so to speak. And now the, uh, the vitriol is beginning. And I will say that some of this is deserved. Others, probably not so much, but because like a lot of other folks, probably almost everybody, depending on who you talk to, I've seen content, clips and snippets and uh, pieces of shows from Fresh and Fit, um, the Yak Whatever show, uh, Pearl Davis, whole bunch of folks. I've seen a lot of Red Pill content, a lot of Roll Tomasi's videos, a lot of Ben Bashers videos, a lot of Rich Cooper's videos. Um, and in defense of a lot of these creators, sometimes what they were talking about was really good information to have. Some of it, in some respects to me, was a bit eye-opening in terms of how some women in some areas look at men and what they expect. And it's been also illuminating as to uh, how some women are behaving. And it's, it's given me uh, a broader understanding of what's 
sort of red flags to look for or be aware of, especially as I look to the future that might or might not involve, you know, being in a relationship with a woman, which would be nice, but considering the dynamics of society nowadays, I have to ask myself, is it worth it? And depending on where I'm going to go looking for a woman, the answer is obviously no, because based on what I'm seeing in terms of the content that's being put out there, the one takeaway I have from shows like uh, Fresh and Fit and At Whatever, and then that panel of folks that are out in Las Vegas, I, I don't know the name of the shelf top of head now, um, the women in those areas, by and large, are not women that I would ever want to be in a relationship with because the impression I'm getting is that based on the women that these shows are very deliberately looking for, very deliberately seeking out to have on their shows in order to generate content that gets clicks and therefore monetization and therefore ad revenue and therefore money in their pockets of these creators, um, they are not at all women that I like to think a sane man would ever have anything to do with, even if it was just for a one night stand. It's like these are women who are walking red flags. And as men, we should be aware of these red flags and seek to avoid these women because these are not women who are going to be healthy for us long term. So that's been informative to me. However, on the other side of that coin, the deliberate exploitation of these toxic women for their own financial benefit is, in my opinion, it's just as bad as all the girls who get onto OnlyFans and believe that's going to be their ticket to the good life. And for a handful of women, yes, if they, if they plan their financial situation out accordingly, they have their own money socked away properly, they put it into investment accounts and, you know, 401k and a Roth IRA or uh, you know, stock market or whatever, if they, if they invest their money wisely, the average woman who maybe starts doing uh, adult content at 18, and let's say she does it through age 25, again, just put the number out there just for fun, let's say she does it through 25, and she's one of those successful ones where she's making, you know, 500,000, a million bucks a year, okay, after she's paid her taxes on all that, she's done all her, taking care of all of her accounting and all that's done, and she's put that money away, by the time she's at 25, if she's been averaging a million bucks a year over the course of a seven year career in adult content, if she's invested that money wisely, she's put at least two to two and a half million dollars into investment systems that will essentially allow her to live off of the interest and the dividends from those uh, investments as opposed to needing to work, which, okay, as one business person to another, if that's the best, if that's going to be your methodology, you make that work, and that does what end up working for you. Much as I don't like adult content, I cannot, you know, I can't hate someone who's playing the game and the game works for them. It's it's no different than me as an owner operator hoping that you know substandard owner operators or shoestring owner operators or owner operators taking cheap freight go out of business. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay, fair enough. But uh, you know the, the real situation is that okay, the OnlyFans women 
not going to tell you about the consequences of doing this because it could either make your life amazing depending on how you uh, handle it or it could ruin your life and absolutely devastate any potential for a stable family or home life or husband and children and whatever else. Whereas for men, no one's talking about enough the consequences of men constantly consuming this content and how it's disillusioning them from um, women in general because the assumption is now becoming that most pretty women are going to be in some capacity for sale. And so a lot of men, I like to think, or I'm beginning to assume, are deliberately avoiding these women in all aspects except for subscribing to their adult content, which it's like, okay, we're just, we're chasing our tail here on this situation. We're not really figuring out any way to move forward. All we're doing is just rehashing the same arguments on the red pill uh, content uh, platforms, while women are just profiting off of lonely men on the adult content platforms and using the red pill content platforms as commercials for themselves and the men who are watching the red pill content to try to maybe be better men or learn something, they're seeing the OnlyFans girls like, you know, hey, she's pretty good. I go, I want to see what she looks like without clothes on. And it's like the cycle just continues it to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, however, one gal on the At Whatever podcast uh, went viral recently for basically saying the quiet part out loud. And it's like, why haven't the rest of us listened to this? Why haven't we heard this yet? Why hasn't this message sunk in that she basically came out and said, like, look, you keep bringing us on here to bash us and trash us for doing this work, but what you're not doing is holding the men accountable who are paying us for this content, who are essentially justifying with their wallets, with their credit cards, with their money, what we're doing. And she went on to say, I made $400,000 last year doing adult work. And I'm gonna make over a million this year. I'm on track to make over a million this year, 2024, doing adult work. And it's because of men that are pulling out their credit cards and subscribing to me and my content that are gonna make that possible. And she's absolutely right. If we as men collectively just turned off all of the adult content the industries that support that would collapse immediately. The women who are using that as an excuse to uh, get out of whatever situation they're in as the easy out, because for them it is an easy out, uh, versus you know trying to hold down a stable job and start at you know forty thousand dollars a year and end up working, making you know two hundred something thousand a year by the time you hit retirement age, if you're lucky. Uh, they're finding that easy out is to be consistently and constantly funded because men are consistently and constantly funding it out of loneliness or desperation or just because they like to see different women naked, which, well, that's the truth. It is the way it is. We are men. We are simple. We like pretty women, and we especially like them when they don't have clothes on. That is just the natural thought process of men. Hey, she's cute. I want to see her without her clothes on. Can't deny it. It's the truth. But what I can deny is the uh, surrender to temptation. It does require discipline because, yeah, as an over-the-road truck driver, I don't have a lot of opportunity to talk to women. I don't have a lot of opportunity to take the time to be still enough to look for an opportunity to form a connection with a woman that might potentially lead to a relationship and maybe even more down the line. I don't have that opportunity. I am too busy working because if these wheels aren't turning, I'm not earning. I don't have salary position. I don't have an hourly wage. Like I have to get, this truck has to move for me to make money. You truckers out there, you know the score. So you would think that I would be the perfect candidate for the digital girlfriend experience, right? No. My mentality is, is that if a woman is not willing to be physically present in my life, meaning I can reach out and actually touch her, I can speak to her, 
person to person in the direct real to real person to person situation if a woman cannot be in that position for me I'm not going to give that woman a single dime or penny or even the idea of attention because I derive no benefit that transaction is only one way and it only benefits her and it benefits me not at all yeah, there's a lot of pretty girls on the internet, a lot of Instagram ladies, you know, a lot of OnlyFans girls, but, you know, I made the decision a long time ago, it's like, if a woman's not going to want to be present in my life, there is no reason for me to, in any capacity, financially support her and, and her digital platform. Now, will I talk to a gal on the internet? Sure, that's what dating apps are for, but, you know, the dating apps, like, okay, I see red flag after red flag after red flag, and it's... Right, well, you just keep swiping until maybe you get lucky and you swipe on somebody who actually wants to have a conversation that could possibly lead to a date, and then you go from there. But of course, since it's the dating app world, and I'm not Chad McAwesome Sauce, uh, that's not happening for me. It is what it is. That's just the reality of the situation. But uh, suffice it to say, it's like the only way to beat this game is not to play the game. And that is not getting involved with the adult content folks and staying away from the loudest red pill creators because their message is just as toxic as the message that those on the left are pushing for women to get into adult work or adult content creation as the easy way to riches. Both ideologies are toxic. Both ideologies harm the people they believe they're attempting to either protect or empower or both. That's my take. I'm sticking to it. And with that being said, YouTube, thank you so much for watching. The handful of you that do, I do appreciate it greatly. I'm not here for the likes, the clicks, the views. I'm just here because I want to be. And I have no Ill illusion at this point that in some capacity I'll go viral enough to be able to make money off this platform. And I am under no illusions. I am not interesting enough to be 